Hey YouTube, Andrew here, a guy with a tractor. Today's video, we're gonna go over how to change the hydraulic fluid in a John Deere 2038R. If you wanna see how it's done, stick around. Okay, we are ready to drain the transmission rear axle. And that's gonna be done right here. So, this is going to hit into your draw bar. So I jacked the front end up just a little bit to ensure it all runs out the back and it don't run out the front and make a big mess because hydraulic fluid on the ground goes a long ways. And this thing holds almost six gallons. So be mindful of that, of how much your oil pan will actually hold. So mine holds four gallons. So I'm gonna pull this plug out, let some drain, put the plug back in, empty this, and do it again. Now this plug is a square plug. So you try to put a wrench on it, you don't have a lot of leverage. But a 17 millimeter 12 point socket will fit on it. A little trip I got, or tip I got from uh, Katie Hill Farmer. So you put that on there, I'm going to start loosening it up here. Now this is going to come out pretty good. Now we're going to loosen our fill port here so it can get air in and drain better. I'm going to get that out and set that aside let air in. Now we'll get that out. Now hold pressure on this and spin it. You can feel it click a couple times. Just like that. And she's off to the races. Now, stick my finger in there and let that drain out. Make sure that's going to hold it because this thing is coming out quick like. Come out so fast that it won't all drain into the pan or drain down in there quick enough. That's a nasty old thing's only got 200 hours, and they recommend uh, changing this after 400 or having it inspected after 400, but I don't trust it. It is green. The uh, right, pan's almost full. And look at that side of the spray everywhere. about full and I've made a mess everywhere so I'm gonna clean this up a little bit empty my old pan and we'll get back down here There's one thing about these these hold a lot of oil and pro tip when you're washing your tractor take your draw bar out it was full of mud earlier. Probably where I got stuck the other day. Oh yeah, we're about done draining. We will get the rest of that in that that pan right there. So I'm gonna let this finish draining and whatnot. Now I'll bring y'all back in before I put this plug back in because we're gonna have to put some Teflon on here to seal it because this is pipe thread. So I'll show you putting the Teflon tape on there and where to put it at and not get it into your hydraulic system. So let this drain and we'll bring it back in in a second. All right, so I've let this drain for 30 minutes or so. 
just letting it drip. So I got the drain plug, got some Teflon put on it. So I like to leave a couple threads back, of uh, plain threads before I add my Teflon. That way when I thread it in, anything here will come back and not go into my hydraulic system. So we're gonna get that reinstalled. I'll put that back in. Anybody don't know about hydraulic fluid, it will drip for days. If you don't believe me, just take an old hydraulic line and lay it in a shop. See how long it drips for. Don't make a big mess. It's easy to just to finish it up and be done with it. All right. Should be good. Plugged in there. Now I'm going to get this wiped down, cleaned up, and then we'll move into doing our hydraulic filter and our transmission filter. All right, so I just learned something that I have not seen pointed out on any video. And every video I've ever seen on this, this is where you drain the hydraulic filter fluid. I was looking up to see, because there's two filters, one for the suction and one for the transmission. I was looking up to see which one was which on the side, and it pointed to a drain plug for the hydraulics, and it wasn't this. Now, I do know that your hydraulic oil heater, if you get that option, threads in right here. And I always thought that, hey, you know, if you had one of those, it would be a pain to change your hydraulic fluid. No, it wouldn't. Because if you look underneath, just on the front of this bracket right here, there's a plug with a nice little washer or a seal on it and everything. Yep, right up there where you can get to it. But if you had an oil pan big enough to hold everything, that probably wouldn't be a bad option. But I kind of like this option, being able to stop it and you're not underneath and upside down. So just do know that you can use this port or the one on the back or the bottom forward of here. This is what it is. I've seen everybody else use this one. It works. It drains the oil. It may not be the lowest point, but it gets it done. All right, so we're on the left-hand side of the tractor. Right here's where you normally get on in the step. So this right here, this filter you can see right here, is your transmission filter. It is a part number LVA16054. All right, run me $34.38 plus some tax. And this other one is your hydraulic filter, your hydraulic suction filter. It is a part number LVA14703. It run me $28.91 plus tax. So there's a little room. All this is going to have to be done from underneath. So I'm not going to try to video it. Um, you could take the tire off if your tire's not loaded, that wouldn't be that big of a deal, but I run loaded tires, so this tire's really heavy. So I'm going to get under here, spin these off and put new ones on. And just like any of the other filters you've seen me change, I'll, uh, lube up the seal before we put them on and get them tightened back down. And then we will put new hydraulic oil in. All right. So... We're ready to fill the transmission rear axle. And on the back side of the tractor over here, there is a cap. You can unscrew it. It's probably an inch and a quarter hole. We're gonna get close to six gallons or a little over six gallons in that rear axle. So cheapest way, five gallon pail. Uses two hands, it takes two hands to pour that small hole. 
you got to get a funnel in there. So another little trick I learned from Katie Hill Farmer is this little flex funnel. It's a three-in-one flex funnel. Found it at Tractor Supply for like five bucks, I think. You can probably get by with other funnels, um, especially if you had somebody to help you. I don't have anybody to help me. These come with a little hole in them. I don't know if that's to like hang it up or whatnot, but the flex allows you to get it down in there and bend it around and take a little bungee cord. I happen to have this already. So hook to that and then come back up here on the seat. And now I have a hands-free funnel that flexes down into the hole nice and, nice and pretty. So we'll be able to pour our hydraulic fluid in, not have to worry about holding the funnel or having somebody else hold the funnel. It's taken care of. All right, so like I mentioned, the rear transmission, transaxle, whatever you call it, takes a little over six gallons. So five gallon pail and a two and a half gallon jug. Um, some people may say, run the, run the generic cheap fluid. This tractor provides a majority of my income. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm putting the stuff that they recommend in there to keep my warranty. So $69.95 for this pail, $39.50 for that pail. So there's $110 right here in these two pails, which I will use all of this between the transmission and the front axle on my truck. So we're gonna get this poured in. If Carter's gonna help me, can you pick up that pail? You don't need a drill bit. Oh, yep. Yeah. We're gonna get Carter to help me pour that in. You gonna help me pour it in? Uh-huh. Are you my buddy? Yeah, all right. So we're gonna get that poured in. You can do a split. You wanna do it on camera? Okay, show the camera how you can do a split. Oh, look at there. He can do a split. I don't know if y'all can see that really, but he can do a split. To be young and flexible again. Be nice. So we're gonna get this poured in and we'll get back to you. All right, so let's pour this five gallons in here. It'll be a slow pour. So if you don't know, when you pour in out of a five gallon pail, a lot of people want to put the spout at the bottom, but put the spout at the top. It allows air to flow back in and it won't gurgle. Ask me how I know that? Learned it from an old guy one time. After I'd made a big mess. It's not oil. It is oil, ain't it, Carter Jackson? Look at it. It's a little less peeing. It is a little less just peeing. Thanks for pointing that out, Carter. Kids say the darndest things. So the owner's manual recommends this. Like every 400 hours or have it tested annually, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Like I said, this tractor makes the majority of my money. I am going to just change it every year or I'm going to change the engine oil. It's not going to hurt it. Anything that's going to be good for it. Turn that car squeaking for you. It looks like a mouse. It does squeak kind of like a mouse. I hate mouses. You hate mouses? Yeah. You hate Mickey Mouse? All right, now that once the pail gets empty, you can turn it over and 
put the spout towards the bottom and get the last little bit out of there. Okay, baby. Get back. So you can see what I'm doing. Pouring it all over my left arms. It's liquid gold. What that is. Alright, so we got five gallons in there. Yep. Carter made a mess in here. Come back, Carter. That is a lot of oil. Damn it. I don't know how to have oil in there. Don't fall, baby. Get off those. I'm going to lift those up really good. Alright. Alright, so we got five gallons in. We're going to check our dipstick. Or probably another gallon in. Start it up, let the motor run, and we'll bring it back in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you change the hydraulic oil in John Deere 2038R and the transmission filter or HST filter and the hydraulic suction filter. Um, so we all learned something today that there is technically a hydraulic drain plug underneath. Um, after looking at it, they're both at the same level, so I think you're going to get all the oil out either way you go. Um, the one underneath looks like it has a seal, so you're not going to have to Teflon tape the pipe thread plug that's in the rear. Um, but it's one or the other, whichever one you feel more comfortable draining a little over six gallons of oil out of. So. Um, if I had to do over, I'm probably still going to do it out the back because I can stop the oil flow a lot easier and I'm not underneath there with all that spilling out. Um, maybe if I had a bigger oil pan that I could catch all of it in, maybe I would use the bottom one. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, hit the like button. And if you like these types of videos and want to help out my channel, please click the subscribe button and hit the little bell notification beside the subscribe button for updates on future videos. Thank you and have a blessed day.